Hey everyone, let's take a look at 17. 17 tends to be one that kind of trips us up, right? Or at least in the past has tripped students up. So it's a good one to go over. So we've got this LSRL and it says based on that scatter plot, all right, this is the original scatter plot. Can you come up with a residual plot? All right, so let's keep in mind that residuals, they're always the actual Y value minus a predicted Y value. And let's talk about where we get each of these. So, and I'm gonna, again, I like to color code things. So your actual Y values, these come from the scatter plot. All right, so these are actual data values and whatever those corresponding Y values are, right? Like maybe this Y value is about seven or something like that. Um, maybe this Y value here is 11. Whatever those actual Y values are, all right, that is, that's where we get those, from your scatter plot. Now, on the flip of that, let's go, we'll go with like a green here. Your predicted Y value, that comes from your LSRL. So all of these points that are on here, all right, and you don't see them necessarily as points because it's been connected as a line, but all of these, any line has an infinite number of points. So for example, this Y value might be three. So we're gonna subtract those two. So let me go ahead and just clean up what we have. And let's take a look at a couple of these. All right, let's start with, let's say we wanted to find the residual at x equals zero. So let's start with the residual at x equals zero. So I'm gonna say this is x equals zero. So let's, let's color code these. So let me go back to my color codes. All right, if I take a look at the actual y value, it's right here. So maybe that's about mm, zero, yeah? And then let's color code and get the predicted Y value off of your LSRL, which looks like it's about two or three. All right, so if I wanted to go ahead and follow this out, all right, this would be the actual Y value minus the predicted Y value, or in this case, it would be zero minus two, which would be negative two. All right, so what that's telling us is on our residual plot, whenever we see zero, the Y value there, the residual should be negative two. Well, let's go look at these. This residual here, looks like it's zero, zero, right? So that's not my answer. Well, take a look here. This residual, that looks good. That does look like zero, negative two. Okay, so I'll keep that in mind. Here, if I look at my residual point, that's looking again at like, that's closer to zero, zero. So that's not it. And if I look here, that is close to zero, negative two. All right, so that looks okay also. So just based off of that first residual, just me picking x equaling zero, I got it narrowed down to options B or D. And if I wanna to start to look at, okay, where do these residual plots differ? Where could I actually find the distinction between option B or D? Well, I'm gonna look at five. I think, I think once you get here, you can see at five, these are all below the x-axis, and five here you have some above and some below. So let's see if I can figure out what the difference with that is. So let me go ahead and just clear these out. Oops. And let's see if we can figure this out. All right, so let me go through and let's get the residual at x equals five. And again, we're gonna do actual minus predicted and I will go ahead and color code this. So let me get my purple. So let's go to five, right? And let's go ahead and get the actual y value. So if I go up to five and get the actual y value, that will be the data point. Now it's a little bit, there's not one exactly on five, so I'm gonna go with this one right here. If I take a look at that, kind of head back out here, maybe it looks like the residual, I'm sorry, the y value is 17-ish, okay? And then let's go see what the predicted y value is there. So if I go to this point, the predicted y value will be closer to there. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's just above that grid mark, so maybe it's 16. So as I go through this, let me alter my pens here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this was 17 minus 16, but it was positive one, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look. So what that is also saying now is if I go to x equaling five, I should get a positive value. All right, so let's go to x equaling five, and you will see that all of these residuals are negative. That's, that's no good. All right, but if I go to five here, I can see that I have positive residuals. This one's two, this one's three, so maybe my calculations here are a little bit off, but the fact that they have positive ones here shows me that option D 
is going to be the correct value for that. So that's how we can start to narrow this down. And let's say you weren't sure. You were like, dude, maybe maybe that's okay, maybe it's not. You could go through and run another residual. And I'll just let you know, I tried it also at x equaling 1. When I did x equaling 1, I got um, my actual y value was 7. My predicted was 5, so that was 2. And if you look at 1, 2, right, if I look at if I was going to go with 1 and the residual of 2, if I go at 1, this one's a little bit high, right? That's up at 3, where this one was down at 2, right? Again, x equaling 1, x equaling 1. So that was another clue to me that D was going to be the better the better choice. And just so we're, again, super clear, let me go back to where I got the 7 and the 5. So if I go to x equaling 1, I went here. This was my actual y value. It looked like it was about 7. And if I go to my predicted, that was off of my LSRL, that looked like it was about 5. So that's where these two numbers are coming from. And again, with that residual of 2, this looked a little bit high. This looked good. So I was thinking D. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.